then you say that this this system, the, the global system, is fully non-local on those on this B partition. And if this is true for all B partitions, so no matter how you cut, you can create a maximally entangled state. Then you say that it's multipartite fully non-local. Okay, so now I used two terms which I haven't introduced yet. So full non-locality and multipartite full full non-locality. Uh, how they relate to genuine multipartite non-locality? Well, well, we have this is okay. So now first full non-locality. So we come back to kind of the bipartite scenario. Uh, we have that the distribution, that the behavior, so like the set of correlation is local, if it can can be decomposed like such, and it's non-local if it cannot be. And for any set of correlations, so here, here we have like, uh, like measurement result and measurement, uh, a set of measurements. So here we have choices of measurements and if we have results, all of the statistics, any such statistic can be decomposed as a convex sum of local correlations and non-local correlations. And in those terms, we say that the, the correlation, the original correlation P is the local. If this alpha is smaller than one, meaning that there is a small, at least uh, non-zero contribution from the non-local correlations. However, we say that it's fully non-local if the al alpha L is zero, so there is no local part. So in this decomposition, there is absolutely nothing here. And by analogy, if we go to now multipartite case, we again have this definition of local locality here, and we say, okay, we can also decompose it as such. So again, we have some correlations where, where now A, B, X, Y are vectors, and we have some local part here and non-local part here, and GMNL is when there exists some non-local part, where here non-local means that it's non-local for all B partitions, basically, and also a convex combination, but that's a details which I don't want to get into. And we say that it's multipartite fully non-local if there is absolutely nothing here, again. So it's purely non-local. There is not, no, not even for a singular B partition we have. So in a sense, Multipartite fully non-local is stronger. So the idea is that okay, we are actually interested in genuine multipartite non-locality. However, we found it that the tool to detect multipartite fully non full non-locality, which is this, uh, it's more convenient. So that's why we are using it. Our results are stronger than the genuine multipartite full non-locality, but for historical reasons, we are more interested in the GMNL, not MMFNL. Okay. Um, any questions to that? So can, I, uh, can I ask yes. a question? Like, uh, uh, it, it seems to be that uh, you can already split uh, non-local part and local part. Then, uh, yes. uh, can you explain what does that mean actually? Because uh, what does what's the what does the uh, what does the splitting actually mean? This because if you given like a probability distribution. Can always split the local part and the non-local part. Yes. I mean, this is basically the the, the fact that okay. So in terms of um, you may think of it okay if we think in a in a vector space because those are actually vectors, then we just can decompose them in the basis like some part is local, which is like a subspace, and also we have non-local. And every possible, probably, distribution can be... Okay, sorry, this is a detail which I haven't mentioned, but uh, we also assume that everything is no signaling, which is another condition, but I don't want to get into it. But basically, if your probability distribution is no signaling, then you can decompose, de decompose it al always in that kind of way. When, meaning that, okay, there is maybe some part that fulfills this decomposition, from your hole, you just can optimize over it and you can find, which basically means like this would be as you decompose a vector into a basis, essentially. So you have like some 
vector basis and yeah you can think of it in that way thank you yes okay uh any other questions Ovidius, can i have another yes. question if you come back to the previous slide okay so how do you call exactly the state where alpha l is equal to one uh if sorry uh, if alpha l is equal to one uh this means that it's just local so uh, this would be this would mean that uh, it's either, either local on a specific b partition or all b partitions it or some convex combination of them okay so isn't like a local but how do i say multi-partite local or something like that it's just local uh, yes, so it basically admits B separable models. So uh, here you have the definition. So in some okay. sense, there there can be some non locality, but uh, on only for specific partitions, I would say. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so now we go to the stabilizer formalism. Because this in this paper we use the stabilizer formalism to describe our to as a tool to go from one to the other, so from genuine multipartite entanglement to genuine multipartite non locality. So a quick introduction about the stabilizer formalism. It is based on the Pauli matrices, which I listed here, and which Pauli matrices follow some special properties that okay we can multiply them and together like so they fulfill this and also they anti commute with each other pairwise uh, if we take all possible tensor product between those four matrices we get something which is called the Pauli group so Pauli group is a group a matrix group composed of every possible Mm, ten, tensor product of here two Pauli matrices for n it would be n however because of this product we also have to include the phases plus minus one plus minus uh, i but it's a small detail not really that relevant to what we are saying but yes technically yes we also have to include everything with a phase with other phases okay so what is a stabilizer Stabilizer is a subgroup of Pauli group such that minus identity here does not uh, is not in the stabilizer. So this, for example, implies that uh, this uh, this subgroup is Albinian, meaning that everything commutes, every two operators from S have to commute with each other. Okay, so for example. A very simple example this is a stabilizer we have like uh, identities x minus yy and zz to make it uh, more concise we often we use the generator representation meaning that okay everything here can be expressed as a product of those two matrices and yes, so the, basically everything can every the whole group can be reconstructed from them. Those are the the generating set of the group. Uh, and then we we use this parenthesis to denote it. Okay. Um, so why stabilizer formalism is actually called a stabilizer? Where is the stabilization? Well, this. Is how why uh, why is this useful and this is how, what is called the stabilization con stabilizer condition stabilization condition. Uh, okay, so we have a uh, we have a state, and if for all operators from the stabilizer we have that this this state is stabilized, meaning that it's a an eigenvector with eigenvalue one, then we say that this state is stabilized by S by big S. Also, for mixed state, we also have this relation that, okay, if if uh, S disappears in a sense on row, so we have this from left and right, we say that row is stabilized by S. We also can say something about subspaces. So not only states can be 
stabilized, but also whole subspaces. And the subspace, we say that it is a stabilizer subspace. If for every state from the subspace, we have that um, every state from the subspace is stabilized, basically. So this, we say that the subspace is stabilizer if for every state from the subspace, the state is stabilized by S. Okay, so again, examples. Uh, this example so from before, X, X, Z, Z. We have two conditions on a state. This actually uniquely identifies a state. This is a maximally entangled state of two qubits. This is how you can represent a maximally entangled state in the stabilizer formalism by using this. Um, another example is that here we have more, we have four generators here. And now we impose the conditions that, okay, for all of them, this condition, the stabilizing condition has to be fulfilled. Because they are actually four, this stabilizer, it will stabilize not a state, but by the subspace. And this will actually be a, a two-dimensional subspace. Just because you can imagine that every stabilizing operator here gives you another set of equations, conditions. So the less conditions you have, more the more state fulfill those conditions. So the, the higher the dimension of the subspace. But yes, this is how we also can um, represent certain subspaces in the stabilizer formalism. Okay, now, to join those two things together. So GME in the stabilizer formalism. This is uh, part of my uh, one direction was proven in, in a previous paper. One direction was proven in my master thesis, which we then put in, the, uh, in our paper. Direction meaning like the implication from, from one to the other. But basically it means that the, what this result boils down to is that you can determine whether a subspace is generally multipartite entangled just by looking at its stabilizers. So this is GME, if and only if, for all possible partitions of your set of qubits, there exists two operators R and S in the stabilizer such that their mar marginals anti-commute. What does it mean? I, uh, let me show you on an example. So we again have the, the example which stabilizes a subspace. We take Q equal one. This means that we only consider the first qubit. And as for our condition, there has to exist two operators which anti-commute on this marginal. And you can see that, for example, we can take R equal uh, R1 as a first operator and S as a fourth operator. And they actually anti-commute because X and Z anti-commute. If we take Q, for example, three and five, then again, we 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 would have to have two operators which anti-commute. And actually we can take the first and the third. And here you can also certify that Z times identity and X times Z, they anti-commute. And if this can be proven for all possible bipartitions, so for all bipartitions, you go through, look every bipartition possible and you always can find such a pair, then you know that the stabilizer subspace is GME and the opposite, if the stabilizer subspace is GME, then you can always find those pairs. Okay, so this was the previous result. And now we come to the first result from our paper. So what we actually proved is a slightly different condition, which looks very complicated, but I will show you on an example what it actually means. So again, the same example. If V is uh, the stabilizer subspace is genuinely multipartite entangled, then for all pairs of qubits, so now we take two qubits out of the set, there has to exist a pair of stabilizing operators such that those stabilizing operators anti-commute on those two specific qubits. So here, and they commute on everything else. So well, for example, we take J equal three, K equal five. So here, third qubit and fifth qubit. And now we identify R and S. In that case, this is those two operators. And you can see that they anti-commute on the third 
they anti-commute on the fifth, but they commute on everything else. And this property is crucial for, for our uh, paper. Why? Well, let's say that we perform qubit. And we perform them in the common eigenbasis of those operators, meaning that here we measure plus or minus state, here plus or minus state, and here is zero one. And let's say that we all uh, here we got plus, plus, and zero, which we represent by this projector. So this projector green is a measurement onto a plus state in on the first, plus state on the second, and zero state on the fourth. What we can do here? OK, so after tracing out, we get this state sigma. What is this? And now we want to maybe analyze what is the state sigma. So by the stabilizing conditions, we, we have that rho is equal to r times rho. So we can take it out. Now we can act with this projector onto r. And because we measure in the common eigenbasis, those operators here in green will actually disappear. So they will acting on the on, on pi, they will give you pi. And we can take out z and x. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. OK, this is the wrong way around, but doesn't matter. z and x we can take out uh, from the equation, uh, from the trace. And then we take this and again collapse it into sigma. So in that way, we showed that, OK, if we have this pair and we measure in this common eigenbasis, we can show that the sigma is actually stabilized by x times z. And we can do the same for the other, other operator, which gives you a stabilizing condition, z times x. Mm, why, is that, why is that important? Well, because those stabilizing conditions, if we have them, they imply, they uniquely identify a state. And this state is actually a maximally entangled state but but in a different basis, so zero plus and one minus. However, it's still an, a maximally integral state. So we say uh, we can, from this, we can conclude that sigma is actually just a maximally integral state. So now you can see that, okay, we have this condition. We have it that, okay, for all possible qubits, we can, we have this, we have this condition fulfilled. And from this condition, we can conclude that we can create a maximally entangled state between J and K. And this, this is what leads to our result, because from the purple theorem, if we can create a maximally entangled state for every B partition, then we know that the, the, the original state is multipartite fully in local. But we just showed that, yes, we can. And we actually can do it for every pair of qubits, which is a stronger assumption. Not for, not even for every B partition, we can do it for every pair of qubits. Meaning that we can conclude that the stabilizer subspace uh, is GME, which implies that it's MFNL, which implies that it's GMNL. The other implication is trivial. So we can conclude that every GME subspace, stabilizer subspace is GMNL. Mm, OK, so now this part is done. Any questions? OK. So, uh, so, yeah. so you needed this, uh, this uh, maximally entanglement between two parties. Uh, yeah, two parties. Two, yes. Two parties to show that they are maximally and uh, they are uh, genuine entangled also because no 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 so genuine uh, entanglement genuine, I, I have. Genuine, yeah genuine non to, to so genuine non locality you need to yeah. do that okay yeah yes so uh, we just designed this kind of property in a way that it allows us to generate the the the, the this maximally entangled state for any pair of qubits yeah yeah, yeah. then you can conclude okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Yes, uh, uh, so yes. to mark. Uh, as the next slide, may I see the next slide? This, this one, one, this one? Yes. Okay. So I believe it is important one, yes? 
Or the uh, yes, important? this is yes. The, the, the... Great. So look, if it's the most important, I would suggest not to use abbreviations because some people will somehow. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. Yes. Means, and then it means very hermetic and not likely for the audience to understand what it is done. Yeah, so yeah, yeah that, that's space, true. It's good to use it in full glory, all the names explicitly because otherwise uh, not everybody will memorize. This is the just simple. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, that, that's, yes, yeah. And that's let's I go agree. Back now. Uh, one slide back. Yes, here, let's say. So, look, the simple question. You are discussing in general mixed states or only pure states? Uh, also mixed states. So, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. so, is it true that if you have such a property for a pure state which satisfies those one of those properties you mentioned, and if you make a little mixture, so you add mix identity with uh, epsilon, the property will always hold or not? This so is something it, which so we... isn't an epsilon ball around any pure state which satisfies a given condition. Is it uh, does it satisfy the same condition? Uh, I was thinking about it, uh, yes, because this is actually how you would prove robustness to the statement, yes, right? Yes, 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 precisely. Yes. yes, so I was thinking about it, but it seems that it's not the case. Uh, mm -hmm. This is more to do with how they prove this, this theorem. But uh, basically, they used the uh, chain inequalities, uh, and you require the infinite. Like this, this whole thing is true. Uh, is true when you take the number of uh, measurement setting to infinity, and this, in some sense, interferes with that. Uh, with that kind of reasoning, like okay, if you go epsilon epsilon from this, you still can maintain this property it seems that you cannot maybe it, this is one of the ideas which actually uh, yes, my supervisor has a, short, yes. a clarification do you cannot prove this property or you believe this property does not hold no 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 so like i believe that it holds however you cannot prove it yeah, in a way yeah, that yeah. they proved it yes. okay this is very much plausible because i will also believe that it's likely it typically will hold but of yes. course other issues how to prove it Yes, yes, yes. And okay, okay. we actually so have... Some uh, techniques are not, not strong enough to prove this thing. Yeah, yeah, yes. Good. Thank you very much. This is all from my side. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so now uh, if you are anything like my supervisor, uh, looking at this, you have one very simple questions, question. Question: How about QDITs? So can we generalize it to higher dimensions? And in fact, there is a problem with that. So if we consider higher local dimension, then we can also consider generalized Pauli matrices, which are here like X and Z. X, uh, X you can think about uh, it's an operator which shifts the, the the standard basis one over. So it adds, if you start, like if you act on state two with X, you get three and four, and but it adds modulo D and Z, gives you a phase corresponding to your state. And uh, those also fulfill some condition uh, like um, Pauli matrices, but they now not anti-commute, but they commute with this phase. You can also create a, um, a Pauli group, the generalized one, but you now have to uh, consider all possible products and also powers of them. And also, you can mm, consider stabilizers that are just a subspace of this, such that everything commutes, basically. You still have this; all those properties hold. Moreover, this property, which I showed you before, the green one, this still holds also. This is from our other paper, but yes, for QDIT, this still holds for any local dimension. So what is the problem? The problem is actually the purple part. So the purple theorem, let's, let's call it that, uh, it requires us to measure out with local measurements uh, s s the system such that we are left with a maximally entangled state on two qubits, or in that case, qubits. However, in a stabilizer formalism, we can encounter a situation like so. So this is a stabilizer for Q tweets. And this is just generated by X, X, X and Z, Z, Z. And here, as you can see, everything locally does not commute. So there we cannot use the shared 
eigenbasis uh, eigenbasis trick. So before we measured out in the common eigenbasis, and this gave us the maximally entangled state. But here, no matter how we measure out, uh, what measurements we perform, we will not get the maximally entangled state. Even though this stabilizer fulfills those conditions. So we, we know that this subspace is GME. However, the method is not sufficient to prove it. We suspect that it's still true that every, even for QDITs, uh, the, the GME, GMNL equivalence holds. However, the, the method here is not sufficient to prove it. We would have to develop something else. However, what we can do with this method is we can consider graph states. Uh, graph states are a subset of stabilizer subspaces, basically. So stabilizer state, state, states even, um, which are stabilizer states that follow certain conditions. So the stabilizer uh, stabilizing operators are created from some arbitrary uh, abstract graph. So we consider some abstract graph. There are some conditions that if we follow, we can construct a state out of this graph. Uh, so yeah, we, we, sorry, we can, does, yeah. Sorry, a double or triple lines correspond to Q tweets, Q quotes, and so, and so yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, it, the, OK, so it's kind of a more uh, subtle thing. But you have to impose the local dimension first, because even for if you have a graph where every edge appears only once, so you don't have a multigraph, you still can consider it in a cut quartz, and then you will still have a different graph state in a sense. It's a it's a like a subtle little subtle thing, but yes, the the, the double and triple they will correspond to the powers of Z operators basically. So yes, they are for higher dimensional systems. So in short, for double lines you require at least Q tweets, and for triple lines at least Q quads and so on. You could say that you can actually do this graph also for qubits, but then you just basically reduce it. So you consider everything module two. So yeah, yeah, sure, here sure, you sure. would have like a, a edge which doesn't exist basically yes yeah, yeah because this is like addition modulo d yeah precisely yes okay thank you yes so yeah we can construct a specific stabilizer from a graph and actually because of this con those conditions how they how they are constructed i don't want to get into details but basically you, what you can do is you can just pick two vertices which corresponds to two qdits and then measure out everything else actually in a, the standard computational basis. So you measure in zero basis zero, one, two, blah, 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 up to D. You measure everything out this this way. And if you measure this in that way, you will, what you are left with is always a maximally entangled state. So for for graph states for any local dimension, we also can do it so. We, we will be left with x times z, z times x, but now they are for qubits. OK, so conclusions. Uh, oh, there is a typo. A GME subspaces, so genuine multipartite entangled subspaces in the, stabil in the stabilizer formalism can be detected quite easily. However, uh, so from the condition, it follows that, as I, sh as I showed you, that you can on the each pair of qubits, you can create a maximally entangled state if you measure out in a smart way, let's just say. Uh, yes, so yes, you, you have an commutation, you, you show them, and this condition by the theorem proven in the other paper, the purple theorem implies that all GME stabilizer subspaces are GMNL, which also includes the mixed state that are in this in those subspaces. Uh, for QDITs, the above property does not hold in general. I mean, the property that we can measure out the pairs, as I mentioned, we suspect that uh, all the QDIT GME stabilizer subspaces are also GMNL. It's just the mother of not our techniques not being sufficient. But what we can show is that for any prime local dimension, graph states are GMNL. Okay, thank you for your attention.
Thank you very much, Ovidius. Uh, now we have plenty of time for questions. I think Carol would like to make. Yes. Well, but this is not a very precise question, but just for you, if you talk to non-specialists who do not work on quantum information theory, you would be asked a trivial question of the kind, what is this good for? How it advances our knowledge of physics? What you can do with it? So it's good to somehow try to find some more general remarks and conclusions, which could be of use for a broader audience. So how would you answer a trivial question, a bit unfair? What are your results good for? I, I would find this quite difficult to answer because I'm always kind of, I don't know, maybe what is the proper word, skeptical, cynical about what we do. And I don't believe that our work is that important for like broad audience. But I'm not sure it's a good... Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's, it's not a good pitch for a grant yes, proposal, especially for, for example. Especially for a referee outside our community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what I would say is that we study two fundamental properties of quantum mechanics and one of the most important ones at that entanglement and non-locality. And we want to see how they relate to each other. And with these results, we can we see that the, there is a, like equivalent between them for a very broad class of state. Not all of them, obviously, because there are some counterexamples. But for stabil in the stabilizer formalism, all of them, all the examples in the stabilizer formalism, rather, they uh, hear the genuine entanglement and genuine locality, they are equivalent. Okay, okay. No, no, this makes sense, of course, but I would add one more thing. I would say that, of course, everybody knows that uh, CHSH inequalities were checked experimentally, and therefore your work in principle could eventually lead to new measurement schemes or new experiments <laughs> which might be checked or verified or uh, realized in an experiment, which is also a good remark that it might have some relations to real real life. Yeah, the, the, I mean, that is true, but, but actually here, because we rely on the purple theorem, <laughs> let's call it that, that uh, and this purple theorem is proven for chain inequality. So in a limit of the measurement uh, measurement outcomes to infinity, you cannot mm -hmm. actually check this experimentally. Okay. Yes. yes, but you cannot check it right away, but it's always good to say something that is, well, well <laughs> yes, of course, yes. a scheme of measurement you can uh, apply right now, but somehow I would always at least try to pretend uh, possible links to an experiment. If you are talking to a broader audience. Oh yeah, yeah. If I if I if I were, I would uh, because there are actually ways or ways okay, or okay. other ways of yeah, detecting yeah, yeah. MMNL. No, no. So look, yeah, if yeah, you sorry. look at uh, into your conclusions, I would somehow uh, big in your shoes try to add some possible links to an experiment just to show that it okay. might have. Look, it doesn't cost you much, and then for some skeptical people, it could be well some okay, argument right. that it is also related to physics. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you and congratulations. Nice talk. Thank you. Uh, I would like to make a question. So, Ovidius, uh, you are saying that uh, we can show that for any prime local dimension, graph states are GMNL. So, what kind of limitations uh, it brings you if you take states of local dimension that are not prime? What happens in the, the proofs? Mm. So basically, huh? Uh, I actually don't. I mean, I remember why I did I did that distinction, but I don't remember quite because actually this part I made before we published the paper, and I don't quite remember whether we managed to solve the problem or not. Basically, what this boils down to is that so. How do I explain that? For if you have a composite local dimension, then you may not be able to go directly to a, so here. 
let me try. Yeah, this is quite maybe complicated, but this that you measure it out and you get x times z, z times x, this will not be strictly true for everything. You can still overcome that, but it's more complicated than that. You you cannot di go directly from this to oh you you measure out and you have a maximally entangled state because yeah it, it is difficult to <laughs> to answer that in a very okay sure. that is not a problem. Uh, do we have more questions from our big audience? Well, I I think not. In this case, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Ovidius, for this very nice talk and all of our uh, people in the audience. And with that, we can finish. Uh, Caro, would you like to say something else? No, no, I would like to pay, say thank you and goodbye. Thank uh, you. Okay. Bye. Thank bye, you very bye. much, everybody. Bye. See you next time.